I'm assuming that you have gone through the other videos and you've created your factor analysis and you have compu computed new variables using the results of the factor analysis where component one here, which hopefully you give it a name other than component one, but component one is a linear combination of all of the subscales that came out in the first factor and you multiply by these factor loadings. So 0.957 times life satisfaction plus 0.666 times social satisfaction, etc. And these you include all of the subscales for factor one in component one and make a new variable and it brings things in at the, the weight that they bring in. So we are going to do a linear regression here. I chose linear regression. And you want to have your questions in mind before you start looking at things. And what I think, I only have component one to work with because that's the only component that I've entered, that I created. But it seems to me that this satisfaction component, that the different age groups might have significantly different levels of satisfaction. So to look at that, you put component one as the dependent variable, and then we can put our recoded age as a factor. And here, it came out, see, we got an error message here, and I knew I was going to get that, but I left it so that when you get your error message, you'll know what to do. Um, reference level, it's going to compare our different age groups. This is what we recoded them to, and NA are the ones that, in our lookup, it didn't match anything. It wasn't there. I don't know why that would be, but it, it happens all the time. So we can't refer... Ah, and I, f I filtered out that NA. I made it a, a missing. But you just change the reference level there. And so what this does, this tells us all of these, these differences are statistically significant because the p-value is less than 0 0.001, and the reference level is what it's going to compare to. So it compares over 50 to the 30 and 50 group. And because it comes out positive, that means the group, the age group of over 50 is more satisfied with life than the 30 to 50 group. Now let's compare to the under 29. The older you get, the more satisfied with everything you are is what I would think. Because being young for is uh, very stressful. And it comes out, these are all positive, and it, that's a subtraction. The 30 to 50 group minus the under 29 is positive, so these guys have a higher satisfaction, and these have even higher yet. And we can, and they're statistically significant. The R squared is how much variability is accounted for by this data and you can't really interpret your R squares when you did all this data recode and if you want to know why put it in the chat button and he'll tell you why why can't you interpret R squared accurately if you've recoded ordinal data to be numbers but so anyway this is statistically significant and we can put in who would, you might think sexual orientation would also let's take this out and put in sexual orientation. And here, the fact that this number is so high, 0.866, home, we're comparing to bisexual. And you can compare to whatever you want by changing the reference level. But, whoops. I gotta click back in there. Okay. Um, Heterosexuals are significantly, their satisfaction level is higher, and it's statistically significant because the p-value is 0 0.001. Homosexuals are not at all, they're the same. There's no difference in their satisfaction levels. And other 
is less satisfied than bisexual and it is statistically significant not as significant as this but you, you choose the significance levels and some people choose point p less than 0.05 um, so anyway and another good feature here is to look at the estimated marginal mean graphs let's just put sexual orientation in there and it will graph it for you and that makes it easy to sort of conceptualize uh, so here in that one you can see the size of the line tells you the range of the answers so bisexual this is heterosexual they're at the highest and have the smallest range of answers the other look at the huge range um, you can put more than one thing in here at a time uh, let me show you. Um, hmm. I wonder if this sex means gender, I think. So let's put that in with it. Oh. I uh, don't know what kind of variable that is. So we'll take it out. Oh, we'll see if work status works. So we have all these kind of work statuses and we're comparing to academics for all of them you can compare to whatever you want let's compare everybody to retired and if it's negative that means the one on the left is less satisfied his homemaker is only well you got to look at the p-values because if this is statistically significant, for-profit work is less satisfied, and that's statistically significant. Same with government work. And let's put here, I mean, you, you can do this. This isn't hard. Uh, and it's very interesting to look at. Your marginal means are also very interesting. Let's take sexual or well we, we can put them both in together there's going to be a lot of things on this graph though see there's your your key oh they're not that different well see this is something that's interesting the pattern for each one of the sexual orientations is pretty much the same so that means that the sexual orientation even though they differed from each other in their satisfaction they get the same benefit from the same kind of jobs you know they're it's the same pattern for every sexual orientation let me take that out of there so that we can just look at a graph oh this happens a lot and it's a they it's not fixed in Jamovi so we go in and edit the names of the variables so that we can read the graphs and you can edit the names of the variables in the data edit um, but anyway this is how you look now that you've done your factor analysis this is how you look to see do different kinds of people differ on these factors